Now, for devices um, uh, which operate adiabatically or close to adiabatic either q dot is identically equal to 0 or q dot is approximately equal to 0. For such devices, we can actually uh, define a performance metric okay, called the uh, isentropic efficiency. Because for such devices, if you, um, uh, if you recall, uh, delta s is 1 to 2 delta q over t plus sigma i n t. Now, if the process is adiabatic, then of course, the first term is entirely equal to 0. And um, in the absence of any irreversibilities, delta s would remain 0. Okay? So, if the uh, process that is executed in the device is an isentropic process, then entropy change is 0 and that would um, uh, indicate that the uh, if it is a work producing process or if it is an enthalpy conversion process, it would indicate that it is operating in the best possible manner because there are no internal irreversibilities. So, the, an isentropic process in such a device would represent the best possible process with the actual process being worse due to uh, internal irreversibilities. Okay? So, for example, if you look at uh, say a nozzle or a turbine, both of which uh, expand a fluid from uh, a pressure P1 high pressure to P2 which is at a, which is, uh, a low pressure. If the expansion process in the nozzle or turbine follows an isentropic path like this, then uh, the conversion of the enthalpy to kinetic energy in the case of the nozzle will be the maximum possible. And the conversion of enthalpy to work in the case of the turbine will be the maximum possible. In the actual case, because there is an internal irreversibility, if we write this expression in differential form, we get the following. because the process is still adiabatic, we get this to be 0. So, in the real case, because uh, delta uh, sigma int is uh, present, it is not equal to 0. Remember, uh, in the case of internal irreversibility, this would be greater than 0. So, that means, the uh, entropy increases uh, during the process continuously. Okay? Uh, so, the entropy increases continuously during the process. It is, uh, yeah, fine, no problem. Yeah which means the state point starting from 1 since the entropy increases the state point keeps shifting to the right okay and that is why you get uh, you, you get uh, you get the process to be like this so that's why you get the process to be to the right of the isentropic process because the entropy increases continuously during the process we have indicated that it is an irreversible process by using a dashed line so, now you can see that the actual performance of the nozzle or turbine uh, between uh, states 1 and 2 may now be evaluated against the performance of the turbines between 1 and 2 s and this can be used to define what is called an isentropic efficiency. So, the enthalpy change between state 1 and 2 which is the actual performance h 1 minus h 2 divided by enthalpy change between the initial state and uh, the isentropic state at the end of the process H2, uh, H2S uh, may be used for defining an efficiency. So, the isentropic efficiency of a nozzle or turbine is defined as H1 minus H2 divided by H1 minus H2S. Notice that it is very important to note this point that P2S equal to P2. So, starting from the same initial state, the working substance is expanded to the same final pressure. In one case, it executes the actual uh, internally irreversible process and in the other case, it executes an isentropic process to the same final pressure. This is very important. So, the basis of the comparison is expansion to the same final pressure. Okay? And we may extend this uh, concept to a diffuser or compressor where uh, in the case of a compressor, we are putting in work. In the case of a diffuser, we are converting the kinetic energy to enthalpy. So, starting from state 1, if the um, uh, diffusion process had taken place isentropically, we would have gone from 1 to 2 s to the uh, to the final pressure, same final pressure. If in the, uh, I am sorry, in the actual process, we go from 1 to 2, which is at the same final pressure, but because of irreversibilities, the uh, state point moves to the right because entropy increases and 
So, we follow path 1, 2. So, in this case, the uh, compressor work in the case of an isentropic process is less than the compressor work in the case of the actual process. So, the efficiency is defined as H 2 s minus H 1 divided by H 2 minus H 1. Okay. For the diffuser also, because the isentropic process is, uh, uh, is more efficient, I am sorry, because the isentropic process uh, can convert the kinetic energy to pressurize uh, much better than the uh, actual process, we write the uh, expression in this fashion. Okay. The H 2 s minus H 1 goes to the numerator here and the H 2 s is in the denominator in this case. Okay. So, let us take a closer look at these expressions and then uh, uh, see what, uh, what they mean. Okay. So, in the case of a nozzle, we have H 1 minus H 2 divided by H 1 minus H 2 s and if we um, uh, use the steady flow energy equation to rewrite this, I may write it like this. So, this basically shows uh, the conversion of the enthalpy to kinetic energy, change in kinetic energy. Uh, in the case of a real process in uh, the numerator and the isentropic process in the denominator. Since the efficiency is supposed to be less than or equal to 1, equal to 1 is also all right, we know that V 2 s is greater than V 2. So, what this says is the uh, conversion of the enthalpy to kinetic energy is better in the case of the isentropic process. So, that at exit the velocity of the fluid is higher that is what this statement says. V 1 being the same and we expand to the same final pressure. Now, in the case of the turbine again we may use steady flow energy equation to write this as the ratio of the actual work divided by the isentropic work. Since eta is less than 1 we know that the actual work is less than the isentropic work as a result of internal irreversibilities. Now, in the case of the uh, compressor, uh, we may write the isentropic efficiency as a ratio of the isentropic work divided by the actual work because isentropic work in this case is less than the actual work. The isentropic compression process is more efficient in the, uh, due to the absence of internal irreversibilities. So, that is what we are seeing here. Now, in the case of the diffuser, uh, you can see that the numerator uh, has V 1 square minus V 2 s square and the denominator has V 1 square minus V 2 uh, square. Okay. So, this needs to be interpreted carefully. Notice that since eta is less than 1, V 2 s is greater than V 2. Just like here, here also V 2 s is greater than V 2, but here the interpretation is somewhat different. So, starting from the same initial velocity V 1 and with the same final pressure P 2 equal to P 2 s an isentropic process because it is more efficient it can actually uh, attain the same pressure through diffusion with a smaller change in uh, the kinetic energy which means that there is more kinetic energy that is left in the stream which can be further converted to a pressure rise if we want okay, which is why V 2 s is greater than V 2. So, with a smaller change in kinetic energy an isentropic process can convert uh, the kinetic energy to pressure, same final pressure starting with the same initial velocity and same initial pressure, it can reach the uh, same final pressure with a smaller change in kinetic energy when compared to the real process. That is one way of looking at it. Other way of looking at it, let us say that we decelerate uh, the fluid to the same velocity instead of uh, trying to reach the same pressure, if you re, if you decelerate to the same final velocity, then what this would imply is that the pressure rise at the end of the isentropic process for deceleration to the same final velocity will be more than the pressure rise at the end of the actual process. That is another way of looking at this. So, we can either keep pressure, final pressure the same or final velocity the same. We have chosen to keep the final pressure the same as the basis of our comparison. That is what we have indicated here also. So, this is the basis of our comparison, same final pressure. Of course, initial state is the same. So, there is no dispute there. Final state is same final pressure. Okay. So, uh, the explanation is a little bit more involved in the case of the diffuser, you need to think a little bit more. 
Let us uh, work out a few examples involving the concept of isentropic efficiency. Uh, steam enters an insulated turbine uh, operating at steady state at 60 bar 400 degrees Celsius and exits at 10 bar 190 degrees Celsius determine the isentropic efficiency. Uh, from the given information we can easily infer that the steam is uh, superheated at inlet and uh, exit uh, of the turbine. So, we can get H1 and specific enthalpy uh, I am sorry specific entropy uh, S1 from the tables. H2 and uh, from the uh, superheated table. Now, if the expansion process is isentropic, then the exit pressure would have been the same 10 bar, right? We are expanding to the same exit pressure and S2S would be equal to S1 because uh, we are expanding along an isentropic process. So, S2S equal to S1 equal to 6.5404. So, in the case of the isentropic process from the pressure table we notice that uh, state 2 s is in the mixture region ok. State 2 is superheated ok, but state 2 s is in the mixture region. So, we can evaluate x 2 s as 0.9897. So, it is just about to be uh, saturated vapor. So, just on the, uh, uh, the two phase region of the saturated vapor line ok. So, if we show the process on a TS diagram. So, let us say this is a state 1. So, let us say this is state 1, the isentropic process this is 2S. So, remember the isobars look like this on a TS diagram. So, the actual state is superheated. So, that would look like this ok. There is an increase in entropy between 2 s and 2. So, the actual state looks like that. So, the dryness fraction at the uh, at the end of the isentropic process is 0 0.9897. So, we may evaluate H 2 s using the uh, data from the pressure table like this and so the isentropic efficiency may be evaluated it is uh, 0 0.89. Okay. So, again you see that uh, 2s and 2 are at the same pressure. So, P2s equal to P2 although 2s as a consequence ends up in the being in the saturated mixture region while 2 is in the superheated region. So, the next example that we are going to look at involves uh, a compressor. R134A enters an adiabatic compressor a saturated vapor at minus 5 degrees Celsius and leaves at 700 kPa 40 degrees Celsius ok. So, it is uh, superheated at the exit and it is a saturated vapor at inlet ok. So, if you draw a TS diagram for this. So, it uh, starts as a saturated vapor at minus 5 degrees Celsius and it is uh, superheated at the exit. So, this is uh, state 2 and the isentropic process most likely will also end up uh, as a uh, superheated state at the end of the process. Okay. So, now we get uh, H1 equal to uh, Hg at minus 5 degrees Celsius, S1 equal to Sg at minus 5 degrees Celsius. So, the specific entropy and specific enthalpy at state 1 are uh, known. Now, specific enthalpy at state 2 and specific entropy at state uh, 2 are also known because it is a superheated state. At the end of an isentropic compression process to the same pressure, remember we want to go to the same pressure, we have P 2 s equal to 700 kilo Pascal and specific entropy remains the same. So, S 2 s equal to S 1 equal to 0 0.9345. So, this is also a superheated state as we had uh, guessed earlier. 
So, from the superheated table we can retrieve H2S to be equal to this after interpolation. Most of the times uh, such data may not be available directly in the table. So, we have to uh, use interpolation or if you have a software to uh, uh, calculate the properties you can use that also. So, we get H2S to be 269. So, we can evaluate the isentropic efficiency to be 0.71 in this case. So, the values that we are getting are typical of actual devices. The turbine isentropic efficiencies are usually in the range of uh, as we saw in the uh, as we saw in the previous one uh, 0.89. So, turbine efficiencies typically would be 0.9 to 0.95 and compressor efficiencies uh, typically depending on the working substance could be anywhere between 0.75 to 0.9 or so. So, the last example that uh, we are going to see uh, on uh, isentropic efficiency involves a diffuser that we uh, uh, that we uh, discussed earlier uh, in, in the SR71 example. So, the uh, isentropic efficiency of the diffuser is given and we are asked to calculate the final speed to, uh, to which the air is decelerated for the same pressure rise. So, we are still keeping the exit pressure the same. So, for an isentropic process we have already calculated the values because remember in, uh, in the earlier version of this problem we had said that uh, the air obeys P V raised to gamma equal to constant which is an isentropic process for, uh, for air. Okay? So, for an ideal gas we may write uh, H equal to C P times T and the isentropic efficiency may be written in terms of the temperatures. Okay. Since the value for isentropic efficiency is given, we may calculate the uh, exit temperature as 658 Kelvin and the final uh, speed may be calculated in the same manner from the steady flow energy equation V2 is equal to square root of V1 square plus 2 Cp times T1 minus T2 which gives us 252.45 meter per second. You may check this. Uh, with what we calculated uh, previously and uh, make sure that V2 uh, uh, comes out to be less than V2S. This is what we had said earlier also if you recall. So, we said V2 should be less than V2S. So, you may actually go back and check the values and make sure that V2 is indeed less than V2S.